Uh, a guy that has played a few bowl games in San Diego, obviously, is, is Ty Detmer. And Ty, let's just go ahead and start with this. What do you, what do you really think of, of Jerem's impersonation <laughs> of you? It's pretty good, actually, because oh, right. I saw the deal on Twitter, and I clicked on it, and it started out like, I was like, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> like the, first, the first three words, and then the voice inflection on, like, one of the parts was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> and then, you, got me. then you looked at who tweeted it. <laughs> yeah. I got you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you did. For about the first two or three words, and then yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Same thing on my mission, too. I, they thought it was native until they uh, heard the third word. Yeah, exactly. Oh the gift goodness. of tongues. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal Williams uh, was so kind to inform us that his nickname for you is Big Belly. Now we want to messed up. We want yeah, we want to <laughs> give you an opportunity to give him a nickname on national television. Man, I don't know. I mean, it's Swag Daddy. That's what everybody knows him by, right? So I don't call him anything different. So <laughs> should his playing time be lessened because of that nickname? No, not at no. all. <laughs> he doesn't have in to fact, sit out the first. In carry. fact, he should have more and not be able to come off the field. Maybe we'll do that. Later. <laughs> He's punished. Oh, you're in that tired. Way. You're yeah. tired. Okay, yeah. stay on the field. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, earlier today, Christian McCaffrey. Um, said that he's going to sit out the bowl, his bowl game, the Sun Bowl, to prepare for the draft. What do you think of that idea? Um, that's, that's different, right? Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I mean, you're part of the team, and it's still a game, you know, even though it's a bowl game and it really counts for nothing at this point. But um, I, I don't know. I, I'd hate to see that trend start because uh, – you want to finish the season. I think as a player, you'll look back at it and probably have some regrets that you didn't finish the year with your teammates, and uh, I, I hope that doesn't catch on. And in the case of BYU, Jamal Williams probably has a lot to gain still from the bowl game, so there's no, there's nothing like that with this team going into the bowl game, I'd take it. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything else for him to gain. I think the scouts have seen all they need to see, but I think for him, it's it's just finishing the year, finishing your career, and, and this is the icing on the cake, and, and enjoy it and have a good time with it. But, um, you know, I, I don't think you play scared or, or – uh, take plays off, those kind of things, uh, to try to keep yourself healthy. I think you play the game. When you get into the heat of battle in the middle of the game, in a bowl game, is it any different than playing in a regular season game? Is there is there a different feeling around it? No, not at all. Once the game starts, so, you know, all the preparation, all that's different because, you know, we practice a day, day off, travel, day off, practice, you know, so you're doing all those things. You're at the zoo, you're at SeaWorld. Um, you're enjoying that time. It's kind of a reward for the season you've had. But once the game starts, the juices kick in, and, and uh, it's a game again. You know, So um, hopefully you're able to kind of put all that aside and still prepare and, and keep the guys motivated uh, to play the game. Um, but overall, uh, once the game starts, it's, the guys are going to play, and uh, it'll be intense. And Wyoming's always been a rivalry for us, so... I don't know if our players or their players really understand that part because it's been a while, but um, I know the fans do and, and us as coaches do. It's a funny dynamic because, yeah, everyone else is telling the players except themselves, this is a rivalry. <laughs> this is an important deal. So how are they taking that uh, storyline going into this game? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think uh, a lot of our guys grew up BYU fans, and they've heard of those games and seen those games and understand it a little bit. And probably a lot of their players from the mountain west area um, have been a part of that too uh, whether they grew up wyoming fans or not um, i think you know people understand that side of things uh, as fans so i think you'll have a, a mix of some that feel it and understand it and, and those that maybe don't you kind of need to go to laramie to really know though right <laughs> You have to go to Laramie. What is it like to quarterback yeah. a game in yeah. Laramie, Ty? So, you know, it, it's uh, the fans are pretty entertaining. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was giving my roommate, Eric Mortensen, a hard time uh, because our first game there, we're freshmen, and uh, he's standing on the sideline the whole time like, it smells like hot dogs. You know, I keep smelling hot dogs. And sure enough, he pulls his pads off after the game and somebody had thrown a half a hot dog down the back <laughs> of his shoulder. <laughs> And I still remember that to this day, you know. It was, uh, it was classic, so we still got a chuckle out of that. Only in Laramie. <laughs> that is really That's funny. That's good service, I guess. Yeah. Deliver, yeah. Good delivery. Hey, yeah. we were sharing yeah. with you. <laughs> the Wyoming defense uh, has taken some verbal lashings because they've given up a lot of points in a couple of games, over 500 rushing yards uh, in one in particular. But 
they feel confident that they can come out and play against BYU. What do you see on film that uh, the numbers don't necessarily tell? Yeah, the, the games they gave up the big rushing yards, UNLV, their quarterback was very mobile, broke off some big runs for them. And then uh, New Mexico, an option team that's just, you know, if you're not tight on that, it can get away from you, which it did for them. So playing San Diego State, more of a traditional type of offense, um, they held them in check and, and did a good job of stopping the run for the most part. And so um, I think, you know, we're in that kind of mold, a little more traditional offense. I think um, Tanner throws it better than San Diego State's quarterback does. Uh, we're a little more diverse and not just lining up in three tight ends and, and running the ball at you as much. So, um, you know, they, they feel, I'm sure, feel confident. They're, they're going to play fast. They play hard. Um, they're a hard-nosed team. So, um, you expect to see the safeties down in the run game and all those kind of things. So it, uh, it'll be a battle. It'll be a tough test because they do play hard and they play fast. They, they were in the Mountain West Championship game, so they're a good, solid football team. How much of your conversation uh, with Tanner is what you've been doing all year versus, okay, I, I've been a quarterback in San Diego and even off the bench against Colorado in 88 in the Freedom Bowl. Yeah, we haven't talked much about being a bowl game, that kind of thing. He played last year. He, mm -hmm. he understands it. Uh, the big thing is just, you know, managing your emotions a little bit. Um, he's super excited to be able to play and to be the starter and, and to be the guy. So it's trying not to do too much too early in the game and uh, manage the game part of it and just run the offense. If it's there, throw it. If it's not, uh, throw it away or, or take off with it. So um, more of it's managing the emotions of, of kind of getting that start again and, and playing. With that in mind, did you did you just burn the film from last year's game one because it was last year's coaching staff that wasn't you guys per se, but two you don't really need to remember a, a particular quarter in last year's game. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't we don't watch any of last year's film, but as a coach, you you go back and you try to you know be mindful of the things he was good at and that he likes to throw those kind of things. So um, you try to incorporate those into your your game plan, but it's not from that the Vegas Bowl it's from all season long and, and what he feels comfortable with what will your emotions be like when you return to used to be the Murph now it's Qualcomm Stadium but the same stadium where you played three holiday bowls yeah it's a great setting that was one of my favorite places to play just uh with you know everything that goes into it whether we were playing San Diego State or or the Holiday Bowl so um, it's a great setting um, you know the lights are on it's kind of the only one of the few games on that night and so um, you know, it'll be exciting and fun to be back in that setting. It's been 37 years to the day today uh, since the Hail Mary from Jim McMahon. What are your thoughts on that play and what that meant for BYU football? Yeah, I think that was huge. Um, you know, it, it was crazy to, to go back and watch the highlights. I didn't see it live, but uh, to see the highlights and how far down they were and just kept chipping away, chipping away. And there's been some crazy games uh, in that stadium for BYU. So um, that was uh, that was one that kind of put them on the map because the uh, SMU team was really a good football team and for BYU to, to be able to go in and, and get a win and come back like they did uh, really was a signature victory. Yeah, I met Eric Dickerson in Palm Springs at a golf tournament and told him I graduated from BYU and he said we're done with this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I said why? And he's, he did. he's like, you know why. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I thought he was pre pretty good humored about that. Uh what played out this season differently than maybe you expected through the 12 regular season games? You know, I, I look back at the season, and there's some games early you'd like to go back and play again because we were still figuring things out, I think, a little bit, um, who we were, our identity, um, you know, what, what was our best, you know, suit as far as formations and personnel and all those things and, and to have, you know, the kind of schedule we had right off the bat. Uh, there was no games in there where you could kind of figure that out and still feel like you're going to win the game so um, you know you'd love to have some of those back and, and be able to go back and play them again knowing what you know now and, and uh, you know I've told some of our seniors I'm like you know you guys were kind of the guinea pig for us this year um, <laughs> you know appreciate you hanging in there and sticking with it uh, and so you know those early games were, were ones that you know you feel like looking back it's like uh, you know as a staff we're still trying to formulate who we were and, and what we needed to do and so felt like as the season went on we got a little more comfortable with that and, and figured it out as we went in the same vein what did play out like you thought it would play out 
Oh, I think just the effort of our, our kids, you know, the, the players at BYU, they play hard, uh, they do what's asked of them, they don't complain, and, uh, you know, things were different, especially for a receiving group, I think, um, a different, you know, personnel grouping. We weren't in four receivers near as much as they were before, so the playing time was limited for guys like Mitch Jurgens and and uh, some of those guys. So, um, you know, I, I did appreciate the fact that we've got great great kids great attitude um, they play hard they do what they're asked to do and and uh you know you knew that was going to be the case coming in because that's byu there were going to be no hot dogs in the pads for you per se but well, if we don't you'd know like, that if you'd like we're well, not going to be wearing pads i don't well who knows <laughs> <laughs> i will not so, be wearing pads we can we can deliver you a hot dog though if you feel like you need that back in your life yeah no, I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Ty, thanks for the time. Great to talk to you. You bet. Thank you.